Hi, this is Steve with Nee Family Lights. Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to cover the topic of 33 ohms and why it's important for the health of your data when it comes to your pixel light shows using WS2811 uh, pixels. This really matters when you're trying to send data over longer distances from your controller where you have plenty of power, but you still have data corruption. And you can do that without an FAMP. If you find this video useful, click that like and subscribe buttons. Now let's get to it. Most people get up to 20 feet from the controller to their pixels without any issue. If you're running beyond that, then a number of factors come into play. In my last video, I showed how to make 40 foot custom extension cables using five different types of wire. Those powered 200 12 volt WS2811 regulated pixels at 30% brightness, and they all had plenty of power on full white, except the data got corrupted for all five different wire types. At 40 feet, they all required an F amp. Six types of cables were actually tested in that video. The first one was four 10 foot vendor pixel extension cables. That one had too much voltage loss to even power the pixels that it wouldn't work. For the other five, uh, one was stranded copper cat 5e, one was solid copper cat 5e, another one was solid copper cat 6. The fourth one was four core 18 gauge stranded copper speaker wire. And the last one was the green holiday 16.3 extension wire. So all five of those custom cables required an F amp. And it got me thinking, this hobby is already expensive enough. Do I need to get a $5 F amp for every output from my controller to make any of these long runs? And at the Virtual Christmas Summit 2020, Keith Wesley put out a good presentation called Ever Wonder Why Your Pixels Flicker and How to Fix It. That video is available on YouTube, and I've got a link for that in the description below. He covers a lot of topics, including the WS2811 chip impedance spec, indicating that it should be set to 33 ohms on the output to best match the impedance of the pixels, and that should help drive data farther. At about 4701 in the video, Keith shows the shape of the pixel data signal with output resistors ranging from 30 to 130 ohms. The 30 ohm and the 50 ohm impedances, the output signal looks the best. For the 70, 100, and 133 ohms, it shows significant degradation of the sh signal shape. Keith covers what the data signal looks like cleaned up with null pixels, pixel buffers, and the Falcon F amps. At one hour and one minute, Keith shows the controller signal output from a Falcon F16, a Culp, a SAN devices, and a PixLite board. The PixLite has a 33 ohm surface mounted resistor for its output, and its output signal looked the best. The SAN devices had plug-in resistor networks. Its signal looked really good as well, and he didn't indicate what the value of those resistors were. The Culp board was unknown. Uh, those are surface mounted resistors, so they're not user replaceable, and it didn't have a great signal output. And the F16 V3 has 100 ohm plug-in resistor networks, which are user replaceable. And that had an okay signal as well. Note the F16 and the F16 16 port expansion boards have removable resistor networks. I happen to have a Falcon F16 V3. And for $12, you can get 100 of these resistors. And I'll have a link to these items in the description below. What I want to do is go back and take a look at the 40 foot extension cables and see if we can make those pixel data runs work without an F-AMP. Before we do that, let's take a look at the Falcon F16 and the resistor networks. All right, so here we are taking a look at the Falcon F16 V3, and I'm gonna point out where these resistor networks plug in. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one up here is the resistor network for outputs one and two. This one is for three and four. So the resistor network bank is right above the outputs. So what I'm gonna do is pull out the resistor network pack here for outputs three and four. You're gonna to wanna to pull this straight up so you don't bend any of the pins. And there it is. And I have a 33 ohm pack here and you're going to want to stick it straight in it's got eight pins on there as well
And you'll want to make sure you do this while the controller is powered down. Okay, so you can see the yellow there, that pack is in. Let's take a look at the resistor networks. I have a multimeter here set for resistance. We have the 100 ohm resistor network from the Falcon and a 33 resistor network uh, that I just inserted in. As Keith describes it, there's four resistors in each one of these. The first two pins, the next two pins, the next two pins, the next two pins has one resistor. So this one has, should have 100 ohms across here. There we go, 101. These next two pins also should be 100 ohms. There you go. If we look at the 33 ohm resistor network, these two pins should be 33 ohms. Sitting at 35. And then these two pins should be 33 ohms as well. It's showing 35.8. Similar to the test done in the previous video, these 200 pixels are going to be driven at 30% output, so they should draw around 3.5 amps. The power supply is set at 12 volts, and we will start with the best performing cable and go to the, the worst performing cable of the five. They all worked, they all required an F-amp, so let's see how they look. So the best one was the 16.3 green holiday extension cable. And what we'll do is we'll start with running this right off of the controller. Output one, which is the standard 100 ohms. Get that cable set up here. And see how it looks without an F amp. Get the uh, voltmeter in view here. And you can see the data is not happy. So turn off the lights, they're still going. Data got corrupt, and we'll plug it. And just to show, let's go ahead and put the F amp on it, which should clean up the signal. right off of the controller. The F amp has a 33 ohm output resistor. Let's take a look and everything looks good. So we're at 7.9 volts here at the end. This is the best quality cable. All right, now let's take this extension cable. We're gonna remove the F amp, put that aside up there. And we'll go to output number three. This time, no F amp. And everything looks great. We're at 8.2 over here. Three and a half amps, which is what we're expecting for 30% output on these 12 volt regulated pixels. So that works great. We're coming off of port three here with no F amp, with a 33 ohm resistor instead of the 100. So let's take a look at the next wire. Okay, here's the four core monoprice speaker wire. And we'll give it a shot with the 100 ohm output out of output one. There's three bundles of wire here. I'm using the one that's made out of the uh, speaker wire. This is for my Rosa wreath. So I'm plugging into output number one with no F amp. All right, we can see the voltage is there. And we'll turn on the lights and see how it looks without an F amp. And you can see it's got data corruption, so we'll stop that. We'll take the F amp, put it back in line. Again, this is output one with the 100 ohm resistor pack. on the lights and all looks good three and a half amps there 7.7 .7 volts here in the middle 
Let's switch it over to output three. Put the F amp aside. We'll go to output three, which is using the 33 ohm resistor pack. We'll see if this one works. And that looks good as well. 7.9 volts here at the uh, weakest pixel and uh, three and a half amps. So that one passed the test. Let's go to the next cable. All right, so the next one is a 40 foot Cat6 solid core. Put the meter here at the front. Going to output number one. So this is back on the 100 ohm resistor network. See if this works. works for a little bit and then it started to flash. All right, we'll put the F amp in. Turn the lights on. They all look great. We're at 7.4 here in the middle. We'll take the F amp out and we'll connect it to up at three again. 33 ohm resistor pack. And that one passes. All right, let's try the fourth wire. And we'll go to output number one, with the 100 ohm resistor. We'll try that one. And we're getting a lot of flashing. Definitely have data corruption on that one. So let's go ahead and switch out, put the um, F amp in, show that this cleans up the data signal. All right, we'll turn on the lights. And it cleans it up, we're at 6.9. Let's try it on output number three with no F amp. So take out the F amp, set that aside, put number three, 33 ohm resistor network. And that works as well. 7.2 volts here at the end. All right, let's try the last cable. Okay, this is the solid core Cat 5E copper. I'll try it with input one, output one. All right, we're getting some flickering, some discoloration there. Okay, we'll put the F amp in and see if that helps. All right, that seemed to do the trick. We're at 6.6, .6. the pixels look, pixels look okay here, even though the voltage is a little bit low. Now let's try it on output three without the F amp. This is the 33 ohm resistor network. And that one passes as well. We're actually up to 6.9 here. So they all work 
without an FM at 40 feet. All right, so doing this testing got me wondering, could we do an 80 foot challenge? If we took the two best 40 foot extension cables and chained them together and came right off the controller with no F amp, would there be enough power and would the data make it? So what I have here is coming off of output three, which is the 33 ohm resistor output, going into a meter, I've got 40 foot of the 16.3 green holiday extension cord, going into 40 feet of the four core 18 gauge stranded copper speaker wire. We got our meter here at the end of that. The same 200 pixels. It looks like we have plenty of voltage, 11.0 at the weakest pixel here in the middle. And let's see if the data signal can make it. And there you have it, 80 feet, no F amp, 6.9 volts at the end, 30% output for 200 pixels, pulling three and a half amps. So there you have it. You can go 40 feet and also 80 feet using custom extension cables without causing any kind of corruption of the pixel data. Keith Wesley covered a number of factors in his presentation last year, and it was very helpful. I covered some of the variables in an earlier video on how far WS2811 pixel data can go with and without an F amp. What I didn't know is that that little tester probably had a 33 ohm output resistor and adding that single pixel after it so I could see what it was doing, I assumed it would be the worst case scenario and that controllers would be better, but that probably was the cleanest signal I could possibly have coming out of any kind of tester. So for about $12 or so, you can get 100 of these resistor networks and replace them on your Falcon F16 board or your 16 port expansion board. If you're using a F48 with smart or diff receivers, those smart and diff receiver outputs have 100 ohm uh, surface mounted resistors and those are not going to be user replaceable. The same thing for the Colt boards. If you're using a Colt board, you won't be able to replace those resistors as they're also surface mounted. I hope you found this information useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.